How to converge a parallel beam of light and that's the topic of this episode. So to understand this, let's begin with something that we have all seen in our life and that is a plain mirror. Now what I've drawn here with the dotted lines are what we call as the normal and normal are, is important for us because they help us keep track of the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection and this is like some sort of an, a reference line for me so you know, to keep track of which rays of light I'm dealing with. So here is my question, suppose I incident three parallel beam of light. So here is my question, what's going to happen if I incident three parallel beam of light? Well, notice carefully the three rays are along the normal and therefore the angle of incidence is zero. Hence, the reflected rays are just going to retrace back. So they're going to go this way. So, But you know what? That's boring. I don't want that because the reflected rays are going to be parallel as well. But you know what I want instead? I don't want these rays to go back parallel. Instead, what if we could make this ray come down all the way here and this ray come down all the way over here. This is the same reflected ray. I'm showing blue for reflected ray so that we can differentiate between the incident direction and the reflected direction. Anyways, imagine this is what I'm interested in. Taking this ray and reflecting it in this direction to converge the three rays at a particular point and let's call it point as F and F stands for focus because we want to focus the beam of light. Well, that's not going to happen because notice the angle of incidence over here is zero, but the angle of reflection is not zero. And if there's anything you should remember about reflection, I should always be equal to R. And that's the rule for reflection. And so, tough luck, that's not going to happen. But you know what I can do if I want to make this happen, if I'm really dedicated about this and if I'm, I'm desperate to do that? Well, what I can do is I can actually take this mirror, so you know, I'm going to select this mirror, I'm going to take this mirror and I can break it. I can break this guy over here and all I need to do now is turn the mirror in such a way that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection become equal to each other. Can you see that? The moment I turn the mirror, so this was the, this was the orientation of the mirror, all I'm doing is turning it clockwise. Once I turn it like this, voila, there we have it. You see, that's what we want, okay? It may not be an app exactly, but you get the point. So once I do that by doing the turning over here, and, and let me just connect the mirrors over here. Okay, that's what we wanted. Once I do that, notice the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And all I have to do now is the same thing on this side. So let me quickly go ahead and do that. There we have it. We have now converged a parallel beam of light to a single point. Ta-da! That's what we wanted, right? Well, not so fast. Well, this is only true provided I only take three parallel beam of light. But when I say converge a parallel beam, I actually mean millions and millions of rays. I want all the rays of light to converge at this point. You will see that this system fails in doing that because if I consider another ray of light over here, and another, so another ray of light over here. Notice because this normal and this normal is exactly parallel to each other, the reflected ray over here, which I'm gonna draw over here, the reflected ray over here is going to be parallel to this guy. Can you see that? It's not exactly right. The reflected ray will be parallel. So I'm gonna try and draw that parallel. It's gonna be like this. And the reflected ray over here is going to be parallel to this guy. Can you see that? And therefore, these two beams of light, these two incident rays of light, are now going to converge at this point. Oh, that's sad. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want those rays also to converge at the same point. So I want this ray to actually come over here and converge, and I want this ray to actually come back over here and converge. Well, that's what I want. But tough luck, that's not going to happen because if you see carefully, notice again the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are not equal to each other, so that can't happen. But you know how I can make it happen if I'm dedicated enough. The procedure is the same. Break the mirror. So I'm going to take my mirror and I'm going to break it and once I break it, I'm going to turn that guy. So you break it apart, turn it, turn it, there we have it. Turn it enough 
so that the angle of incidence is exactly equal to angle of reflection and voila and let's do the same thing over here now all right so have we solved our problem well it seems like so but i can keep continuing i can keep drawing more rays of light so for example i can draw another parallel beam of light over here and over here and again you'll find the same problem you will notice that the reflected ray is going to be parallel to this ray again that's not what i want instead i want this ray to go and focus over here and this ray to go and focus over here but again the incident ray and the reflected rays are not making the same angle and so now you know what the procedure is let's do that quickly let's do that very quickly And if, you, and, and if you have watched this carefully, what you can see is the farther I go, the smaller is the angle by which I need to rotate my mirror. And that's what you keep seeing in order to make sure the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And I keep doing that and I keep doing that. I have to keep on turning the mirror. And so now you see that all the incident rays, we have intuitively focused them by making the angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and in doing so just check out our mirror now it was plain to begin with but it's no longer plain can you see the curvature over here and that curvature my dear friends is what we call as a concave curvature oh crap and that curvature is a concave curvature so you can notice that in order to actually curve your rays of light and focus them you require a concave mirror concave is what we need so hopefully I gave you some intuition behind why concave mirrors tend to converge a beam of light now more importantly a more important question would be if you are really into it what is the shape of this mirror you know that's more important at least from engineering point of view what shape is that well that is something we cannot do it intuitively at least I don't know how to get, get this intuitively. We will need a little, little bit of calculus maybe, or maybe Fermat's principle to figure this out. But if you do that, I leave that to you. You can check out videos based on that. You will see that that shape turns out to be a parabola. You will require a shape which is a, which is a parabola. And in three dimension, it becomes a paraboloid, okay? So this is what a parabola looks like, you know? If I could draw. And every parabola has a point, which we call as the focus. And if you make this guy the mirror, if you actually silver this guy, okay, I'm very bad at silvering, and then you will see that any incident beam of light, regardless of how far they are, any incident beam of light, you will always see that when it comes to a parabola, that these rays of light are actually going to, oops, are actually going to converge at this point. All the incident rays, it can be proven mathematically. Okay, but you know what, parabola, or parabolic mirrors are a little bit complicated. I mean, we can't do much with them without getting into detailed mathematics. So you know what is easier? A sphere or a spherical mirror. But a spherical mirror doesn't really converge all the beam of light into a single point unless I take a very small part of a sphere. So if I were to draw a sphere like this, okay, and if I were to zoom in at this part, you know, at this part, this part you can almost see <laughs> I mean that's not exact but you can almost see at this part the sphere oh sorry the sphere and the, the parabolic shape they meet I mean they co coincide I mean they look pretty much the same so if I was dealing with only a small section of a of a mirror a small section of a curved mirror then instead of dealing with an actual parabolic mirror I could actually deal with just a spherical mirror because spherical mirrors are very easy to deal with and that's what we're we'll doing in the syllabus and we'll see a lot of more videos on concave spherical mirrors that converge a beam of light alright so I hope I was able to give you some intuition beyond how these things works see you next time